Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel and to highlights of stages six and seven of the UAE Tour 2021. I know I'm a little bit late to this one, but Omloop on the weekend got in the way, and I thought it'd be worthwhile still reviewing these two stages. Stage six was the Dubai stage, finishing in Palm Jumeirah. They've used this finish a few times, 165 kilometer stage. And comment down below, did you watch any of the UAE Tour 2021? Did you like these highlight videos? Was it a more interesting race than you expected it to be? FDJ initiated the breakaway for the day, pretty much straight out of the neutral zone. They were joined by Lutschenko from Astana once again and Tony Galapan from Azure to our Citroen. Lutschenko was obviously in that long breakaway attempt on stage 5 up Jabal Jais. But the sprinters teams weren't too concerned about the breakaway. With 98 k's to go, they had a 3.5 minute advantage, Tony Galapan mopping up some more intermediate sprint points, I think, trying to get into the black jersey. The main interesting part during the middle of the stage was this crosswind action. Once again, Chris Harper from Jumbo Visma, you see at the front in a yellow jersey trying to initiate a split. Luke Rowe with Adam Yates on his wheel trying to prevent that split from happening. Luke Rowe got in the crosswinds, obviously. And there was this period of time during this stage on this highway where teams were sort of trying to create splits and they'd come off the gas here. As you can see, they're not going as hard at the front. They're all bunched up and there's a proper echelon behind them. Then after that lull, Quickstep decided to try and split it once again, Almeida at the front, but either the wind wasn't strong enough on stage 6 to properly split it, or Bora and Quickstep just weren't working in unison properly, or perhaps unlike on stage 1, Ineos and UA team Emirates just weren't motivated enough to split it properly. The gap to the breakaway was 40 seconds with 32 k's to go, and it was odds on that this was going to come down to a sprint between Sam Bennett, Caleb Ewan, Pascal Ackerman, Gavidia as well, how would he go? Viviani, he's looked a bit better in this UAE Tour, actually. And Astana once again tried something at the end of this stage. They were really active in the UAE Tour, but were, were luckless. They didn't actually come away with a stage win or a podium on GC. And the setup to this sprint finish in Palm Jumeirah is actually quite tricky. They went under this underpass. It narrowed. There was actually a crash, I think, for Viviani's lead-out man, Ineos, brought Ghana to the front, and they drove it super hard through all these roundabouts and chicanes, trying to keep Adam Yates safe obviously because of the three kilometer crash rule and then in the last three kilometers they were directly on the coastline the wind was blowing from their left to right so being on the right hand side of the peloton was an advantage and it was at this point that we saw big problems for Caleb Ewan with 800 meters to go in this sprint he's got no lead out men around him the wind is coming from the left to right Caleb Ewan's on the right hand side of the screen and he's getting pinched by David Decker in the green jersey right in front of us for Jumbo Visma and Elia Viviani who's in just in front of Caleb Ewan in the red jersey but Ewan with no lead out men around him to protect him he gets that wheel of Bennett stolen from him by David Decker who squeezes in on him and with Ewan being out of position and losing wheels with 600 meters to go you can see him having to sprint in the wind trying to at least get back onto David Decker's wheel Gaviria on his wheel his sprint was pretty much over at this point having to do so much work in the last kilometer before even getting to the sprint Merku does a really strong lead out different to his stage four lead out in stage six drops Bennett off with 150 meters to go with one lane on his right hand side on the barriers and Bennett's just way too good with that sort of lead out. We'll show the overhead shot and show why this was the perfect lead out from quick step. And it's really this freeze frame that shows it perfectly. I think they've got like 150 meters to go. Merku has kept Bennett in perfect position. Bennett's obviously starting with a full bike length advantage on David Deck. And now Decker could follow Bennett on the right hand side, but Bennett's got such good kick. If he follows Bennett, he'll probably get second for sure, which Viviani ends up doing. But he's not going to be able to come out of Bennett's wheel if he's even able to until really late because Mercury will be on his left and the barriers will be on his right hand side. So for Decker to beat Bennett from this position, he's going to have to beat him head to head in a 150 meter sprint with Bennett having about a half bike length advantage. Pretty much never going to happen, particularly with Decker having to do more work beforehand and Bennett being way quicker than him and Viviani. Absolutely textbook stuff and they deserve the win. Their second sprint win in a row. Viviani second, Ackerman third, Decker fourth and Gavidia fifth but let's take a look now and compare and contrast that stage six sprint to the stage seven sprint we're going from Dubai to Abu Dhabi 147 k's another sprint stage will Ewan be able to get his positioning right Ackerman had been struggling in the first two sprints in the UAE tour or would Merku and Bennett get it right again and win by multiple bike lengths once again and to be honest this stage played out pretty similarly to stage six 
before it. But Gacha obviously trying to defend 35 second lead on GC. I think he'd been docked 10 seconds for Palance, giving him a push at the end of stage six, which was very strange. Uh, but still, 35 second lead should be fine. There was a breakaway once again with FDJ and Astana Premier Tech riders. But just like the day before, there was some crosswind action. It was actually a little bit more threatening than the day before. Luke Rowe once again with Adam Yates planted right on his wheel. Adam Yates made every single first echelon across the week of the UA Tour. Fantastic from him in the crosswinds. Chris Harper there once again. Caleb Ewan, third wheel. And I think Sam Bennett was in that group as well. I think you can see Filippo Ganna actually getting dropped from that first echelon on the left-hand side. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, whether that was by design. And because Yates and Pogaccio were in this first echelon as well as UAE sprinter Gaviria and quickstep sprinter Sam Bennett, I thought they may have a chance of being successful. Chris Harper was obviously trying to get onto the podium ahead of Almeida, but Cohesion broke down eventually. I think Quickstep got a little bit worried that the gap might get too big to Almeida. It was only, I think, 40 seconds ahead of Harper on GC until with 40 k's to go out of nowhere. There was a big crash in the middle of the bunch with Adam Yates going down super hard. While Poles, I think, got pretty lucky not to hurt himself on the barrier to the left-hand side. Yates, I think, hurt something in his mouth. I haven't seen too much about that, but Amador is coming over from the left-hand side to deliver bid-ons, I think. He's got Rivera on his left hip just behind him. Luke Rowe is just in front of Rivera with Rivera's wheel to the right of Luke Rowe. And I think Rivera maybe loses a bit of attention or whatever. He loses his front wheel and he gets pinched, I think, by and touches Rowe's back wheel. He then goes down and he collects Adam Yates, who, who was to his left-hand side, and Adam Yates hits his head pretty hard or face rather straight on the tarmac. Nothing Yates could have done about it. Really unfortunate to see that. So that was a real shame seeing that crash with 40 k's to go. That pretty much shut down the stage afterwards. You can see Luke Rowe getting straight on the team radio saying what's happened. I think he threw his bid on immediately so he could get on quicker. Yates, although banged up, was able to finish the stage and maintain his second position on GC. I hope he's okay. I'm not sure what his next race program looks like, but he is in magic form. Pagacha just missed the crash. He was just behind Adam Yates, who went down in front of him. But we'll fast forward to the sprint finish. We'll play it in full speed first, then we'll rewind it and see what changed with the Lotto Sudal lead out between stages six and seven, notably the order in which they have their lead out men. Martin last jumped early for Bora Hansgrohe. Pascal Eichmann wasn't on his wheel once again. Merku dropped Bennett off with about 140, 160 metres, but Caleb Ewan was in perfect position on Bennett's wheel and was able to beat him head to head in the last 100 metres. So that made it two for Sam Bennett, one for Caleb Ewan in the sprints in this UAE tour. But what changed in this stage seven sprint compared to stages four and stages six where Bennett beat Ewan easily. Well, first of all, it seemed that Lotto Sudal changed the order of their lead out. Previously, they'd had Jasper de Boist as their last man for Caleb Ewan, whether by accident or design. Today, they had Roger Kluger. He was supposed to be Caleb Ewan's last man. He's the bigger Lotto Sudal figure behind de Boist. You can't even see Caleb Ewan sitting behind Roger Kluger. He's so big. So from two kilometers out to 500 meters out, the Lotto Sudal lead out train did a much better job of protecting Caleb Ewan. And I think that's the most important important time that he needs protection because as you're about to see here he doesn't mind finding the quickest lead out man or surfing wheels in the last 500 meters if he's kept fresh up to that point he can look after himself and you see here he jumps off Roger Kluger's wheel and slips onto Martin Last wheel Martin Last does have a really quick lead out he's a good sprinter in his own right the Bora Hansgrohe rider and you see right now that he probably would have lost the sprint if he'd stayed on Roger Kluger's wheel Kluger I don't think knows that Ewan's not in his wheel anymore more. And Merku on the left hand side, Kluger in the middle, and Lars on the right hand side are all trying to fight for this middle point of the road because this is a left hand bending finish and that's the best place to be. So they're all going to converge on that point. And because of that, Roger Kluger gets pinched by Merku and Martin Lars. And if Ewan had been on Kluger's wheel, he would have been too far back in the sprint and Bennett would have won once again. But fortunately for him, as you can see in this overhead shot, Merku brings Bennett across from the right to the left-hand side and pretty much drops Bennett right in front of Caleb Ewan's wheel. And this is why Bennett wins sprints more consistently than Caleb Ewan. Everything went absolutely right for Caleb Ewan in this sprint. He had Bennett brought right in front of him. He had Case Ball lose the wheel of Bennett, allowing Ewan to get that wheel. That didn't happen in stage six. Decker pushed him off 
Sam Bennett's wheel. He's able to get Bennett's slipstream for a moment and use that to launch into open space to the right hand side. There wasn't open space on Bennett's right or left for a lot of the sprint on stage six either. But if he does get it right, Ewan is quick enough to beat Bennett in a 100 meter head to head drag race, which this was. But you have to say, based on what we saw across all of the UAE Tour sprints, the combination of Merku and Bennett is likely to win a lot more races this year because Ewan is relying on a lot more things to go his way to be in open space or to not have to work too hard in the lead up to the last 200 meters. But here's the results. Ewan first, Bennett second, Bauhaus third. Nice result for Bauhaus. He's having a pretty good preseason, actually. Merku still fourth, Caseball fifth, and nice to see Greipel sixth in the top 10. Ackerman, not a good week for him at the UAE Tour. And obviously, Tadej Pogacar took the general classification victory at the UAE Tour. No changes in that regard in stages six and seven. Adam Yates, a very nice performance from him, 35 seconds back. And Jua Almeida, third, a minute and two back on Pagacha. Given the announcement of Tadej Pogacar's contract extension with UAE Team Emirates, tomorrow I've got a video plan showing how Tadej Pogacar is the complete GC rider. And you can see evidence of that from pretty much all of the stages at the UAE Tour. But that's all from me. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Ciao.